Okay, there we go. So uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me, and it's been uh, it's an honor for me to be here. And actually, also it's an honor to speak after, after Francesco, who is actually the person who hired me at IIT. So a few words about the uh, IIT. Uh, the Italian Institute of Technology is a research center, so it's not a company, but basically it's a private foundation which has two missions. So the first one is that of doing research, basic research. And the second one is to do technology transfer. So technology tra transfer is that complex exercise which is basically, uh, which basically consists of taking the research outcomes and deploying them onto real uh, industrial use cases. So IIT is that wonderful place where you, if you go to the coffee machine, you might uh, meet uh, Nobel Prize nominees. And the research is basically composed of four components. Computational science, one vertical, life tech, another vertical, and then nanomaterials and robotics. Robotics, uh, uh, historically, more or less, uh, joined them all because it's uh, multidisciplinary. And one of the probably um, uh, most known humanoid robots developed at IIT is the ICAB humanoid robots. So the ICAB humanoid robot uh, uh, received the contributions of many, probably the least uh, by me. So it is a one meter tall humanoid robot uh, developed at IIT with skin capacity based sensors, uh, four stock sensors, entirely developed at, um, at IIT. And it's been really for years uh, a drive for the developmental robotics. And uh, when we somehow look back and we zoom out a little bit the ICA project, which somehow now is uh, 15 years old, uh, one of the main uh, objectives was to test this assumption. So uh, that an artificial agent requires an anthropo anthropomorphic body to develop an epistemology compatible with that of humans. Epistemology basically means understanding of the world. And this basically was the main assumption uh, tested uh, in the uh, uh, Roboca project uh, led by Giorgio Meta, Giulio Sandini, and David Vernon. So the, uh, my personal view on this uh, uh, testing is basically that over the years, the community working on ICAB was trying to develop mappings between perception and action in terms of cognitive architectures, trying to maximize some KPIs. And uh, basically, these KPIs, then this maximization problem uh, as was subject to some constraints, like the task and the environment. And the underlying assumption of this is clearly that the body is basically invariant. And the invariance of the, of the body was so nice because it uh, helped the robot to be distributed all over the world, so there are 50 copies of, of ICAP. But the, the fact that the body did not change extensively, basically, uh, was something that we as a team learned in the hard way. So for years, we've been trying to develop uh, um, balancing algorithms, uh, walking algorithms, uh, physical human robot interaction algorithms for the ICAB uh, uh, in Genoa. And clearly, the body was indeed a main, uh, a main limitation. So these are some of the failures that clearly in a uh, human robotics lab happened, but it, they, they clearly indeed were part of the pain. So back at the time, we thought, no, come on, if we have to think of another uh, generation of ICAPs which takes a step towards the industry, we would like to have a body intelligence, a degree of, body, of body intelligence. I'm not clearly the first one who shows this video. This is the passive walker. Uh, which is a, a, a nice, fantastic device which achieves its tasks uh, without a single line of actu uh, AI, of, without actuators, and without sensors. So clearly the body has an intrinsic importance for any performance. And then the, the problem was how, how should we implement this? Well, if we get back to the perspective on what we were doing on ICAB, basically the constraint of the body had to become an optimization variable. So basically this is what we are trying to do in the ErgoCA project. The ErgoCA project is basically a 10.4 million uh, project that is funded by INAIL. So INAIL is the Italian Institute for Accident and Prevention. And the main problem there was, yeah, the main problem there was uh, that INAIL pays each time a worker basically sue the work environments for getting sick. And the musculoskeletal diseases have a big impact there. So uh, INALI would like to work on new generations of 
uh, of a new generation of tools which basically allow to reduce the impact of musculoskeletal diseases. So there are three units at IAT, mine, the one uh, then uh, led by Marco Maggiali, and then uh, the, uh, the one by led Lorenzo Notale. So this is uh, ErgoCab, uh, one of the uh, evolution of the humanoid robot, of the ICAB humanoid robot that we developed. So right now, ErgoCab is uh, teleoperated, and teleoperation it is something that we basically worked a lot back, back in time. And uh, there is Mohammed uh, that you will see in a second teleoperating the robot. So this work, this four-year work on teleoperation basically led us to understand how to retrieve data, and you will see in a second how to, uh, uh, basically how we will uh, develop this. While Mohammed uh, is still operating the robot, the other component that we developed uh, in the ErgoCA project was the wearable sensors. So because we want these robots to interact with human beings at, uh, at the physical level. So the other big component was to perceive the human both at the kinematics and dynamics way. So, so basically, we have been developing, we have been extracting from the robot uh, uh, sensors, and then we have been building these force shoes, uh, which are basically force torque sensors integrated inside uh, insoles, and then uh, we have been uh, developing uh, basically uh, non-invasive suits uh, for motion tracking of the human. Online, there is here working the uh, kinem whole body kinematics and dynamics, uh, and uh, nicely that this is a reward version that started by Francesco, so this is sort of funny because for me it's a, re uh, a, re a rejoining of uh, activities. And uh, I don't know if we have also the, yeah. So basically online, you, you have this estimation of external forces, uh, and, uh, and basically Claudia, if takes a, uh, await uh, all the inverse dynamics, evaluate the, the joint torques, which is a measurement of the ergonomy of the human. Okay, so in the meanwhile, basically, that we were working on these two components, uh, the main point was to take data from the human and then teleoperation. So we were, uh, after four years of teleoperation and making wearable sensors, we were able to, we were able basically to have uh, a logging system which provided us with structured, clean, and uh, synchronized data. And then we said, okay, let's apply machine learning in order to make the robot autonomous. So, and I think that now the robot is autonomous. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is not what, what is going on behind the scenes. Basically, the guys uh, swapped, they turned off the operation, and turned on the, the, the autonomy. And uh, so let's try to see if it works. Uh, ergo cab, how are you? So. I'm functioning within okay. normal parameters. <laughs> so what is going Ready on here? to assist with physical collaboration tasks. How can I help you today? And if you want to know a little bit more the details, this is basically what we recently published in uh, uh, Robotics Automation Letters. So in this paper, there is no uh, LLM integration, so it's not exactly what is working right, right now, that then will come in uh, basically publication that we will release most likely in the 1st of January. So this is uh, uh, in a really fast way. Uh, uh, the last thing that I wanted, to, I wanted to say is that if you are here, please come to the booth of IIT. Many uh, roboticists of IIT are here uh, showing uh, their technologies, so please do not hesitate to come, uh, to, to, come to our booth. So ErgoCab, uh, uh, Ergo, Ergo do you want to uh, somehow say bye to the audience? Goodbye. It was a pleasure meeting you all at Humanoids and Nancy. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, yeah.